Greetings and salutations, world. I am the Bearded Con Man, and with me is the epic Joey D. And welcome to the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 full review. Now, we're going to be talking full spoilers and non spoilers within this, so keep that in mind before going ahead. If you haven't seen the film yet, we'll let you know where to cut the video at because that'll be an entire other half of this video. So stay tuned, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Good show. Indeed, sir. Indeed. Excellent, yeah. Overall thoughts of the movie? I thought it was fantastic. I loved a whole lot of it. There was very little that I didn't like, and it's just me being kind of nitpicky. And actually, I was even corrected by the um, by the Barry Khan man earlier um, about some things. So I was even corrected, <laughs> and I'm always right. <laughs> um, I was I was ge being genuinely just informing you, my friend. It wasn't <laughs> correcting you. <laughs> he corrected me. It was stern. I, I cried a little bit. I'm still shaking. Well, baby hand is shaking. Talk about this off camera. See, you want to know? Don't make me. <laughs> <laughs> so good. It, you, so you re, you genuinely enjoyed it, then? I really did. I really liked it. I thought it was a great movie. I um I thought it was funny throughout, action packed, and everything. So I thought it was everything a good sequel could actually have. Absolutely. What about you? For me, yes, absolutely. So um, to my viewers out there, know that Guardians of the Galaxy is not only my personal favorite Marvel film to date. Um, I feel like Civil War and Winter Soldier are right up there with it, but I just threw that that movie through and through. I just love it. So not only is it my favorite Marvel movie today, but it's also one of my top five favorite movies of all time. All right. So yeah, I know kind of a little bit of a ethereal <laughs> explanation for that film, but it is what it is. Um, so when two came out, I mean the hype for me was already high. It, it's actually my most anticipated film, or it was because we've seen it now. Mm -hmm. It was my most anticipated film for 2017. Mm -hmm. So I was already on the hype train big time, and I knew just based on what I saw in the first one that it was going to be great, and I was not disappointed. Um, I feel like the first one is superior, but in most cases that ends up being the way but that's not saying that this movie wasn't great i think it was awesome um i i loved it through and through i, f I feel like we kind of have like some of the, a little bit of nitpicky things but for the most part it was a fun action-packed thrill ride yeah gave uh, a lot of laughs a lot of emotions that i did not expect it so, got you in the fields. It, it did get really you. did, man. I'm like, I did not come in here to like go through my teenage years again and being happy, sad, and mad <laughs> and, like within five minutes of each <laughs> each emotion. So um kudos to James Gunn on that. Yes. Um so I do feel like, like you said, it broke the mold as far as sequels go. It did not suffer from what I like to call sequelitis, where it doesn't mm -hmm. follow in the footsteps of the first film. It kind of gives you a little bit of a psych out if you kind of notice yeah, it in the beginning. Yeah. And it's like, nope, we're going in a completely different direction. And it was awesome. Yes. Yes. So, so that's, oh, huh? it's going to break the sorry, Muppet Babies. It's going to break the Muppet Babies. I get excited with my hands and things tend, if they're in my way, they tend to get hit. So I do apologize. Sorry, Muppets. See, my sorry, baby Muppets. hands don't do that. My baby hands, <laughs> they, they stay where they're supposed to be at. Yeah. It's but, Italian in me. I go everywhere, man. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> We got a big shelf next to him. I'm I'm actually really afraid. I'm, I'm afraid. gonna I'm 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 gonna fold my arms. <laughs> I, I don't want to cause any trouble, so they're just I'm just gonna keep them like this. Got, got some baby Groots <laughs> over there. Mm -hmm. They're they're in pots. They they're they're gonna be all right. They're a little nervous right now. They're he looking he legitimately does have two baby Groots <laughs> over here. That's not just a joke for off the camera. <laughs> no, but we do have some talking points we want to get in. We we decided to make a pros and cons list actually. Um, if I don't know if you guys zoomed in on that or whatnot, however big your TV is, we'll our, our handwriting is. Um, we're gonna we're gonna freeze over it, but it's like a full pros and cons for Joey D, and then a full pros and cons for yours truly. So we really did do this pros and cons, and my handwriting is horrible. So we're gonna go through our pros and cons and discuss them. So I'm gonna do one for me, and then he's gonna do one of his pros, and we're gonna talk about them. So um, first. Pro for me, and I think it's actually the first pro for you, mm -hmm. ironically. Um, it's funny. It is la like laugh out loud hysterical from the time you step into the theater. From time it cuts on, it's hysterical. Absolutely. 
Like, I, I mean, I haven't laughed so hard in so long. I think the last time I laughed this, like, like this was probably the first season of The League. If you haven't seen The League, you need to watch it. It's hysterical. It is a great show. So, that's that's one thing for me. Um, well, you want to do the next one? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, for me, um, I put almost the same exact thing. You'll find that Joey D and I, um, we made these lists completely separate times, but we both have very, we're like on the same wavelength. So if you're noticing some similarities, it's just because that's just, we vibe with each other. So my one on my, on the first of my pros list is the humor as well. I could not get over how funny this movie was and it wasn't anything forced. It always came out from left field. It yeah. felt like it was some of the most ridiculously set up situations and then the payoffs were beautiful yeah it was so good i mean there's a specific line and i don't want to get into it but it comes from a certain blue skinned red finned angel <laughs> and you know what i'm talking about yeah. and if you've seen the movie you know what i'm talking about it's just that that line will be forever remembered i'm telling you right now you heard it here first so the humor in it it was just it was hilarious start to finish and it was that quirky james gunn comedy yes. It wasn't like your typical, like, you know, knock-knock joke or anything like that. It, it was genuine, crazy situation type um, humor, and, and I loved it. It, it, was, it was fantastic. Yes, that is Mountain Dew in a low ball, and I have my pinky up. Yes. That's right. We are sophisticated nerds, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we are. So here's to you. <laughs> next pro from you, sir. All right. Um, next one for me is Baby Group. Um, I've, I heard some, I tried to avoid a lot of the earlier, uh, um, reviews of things like that or all the Earl, like secondary trailers and all that stuff about the movie. But what I kept hearing was baby group stole the show and he absolutely did this time. If you love baby group the first time around, you absolutely love him the second time around because Groot originally was great. He was the knockout. You know, he was that that breakthrough star that they were like, oh man, this guy, three words, and you you felt all that emotion. But there is something I do want to talk about with Groot in the um in the spoiler review. So we'll get to that in a little bit too. But um, like I said, I thought Baby Groot was amazing. Like I was I was glad they took him out the pot. You know, he grew some legs. He was ready to go. It was great. Like, you you will love him, and I will be owning a baby group very soon. By the way, that will be the first hot toy I buy is a life-size baby group. I would love to see that. Man, that thing is beautiful. <laughs> yes. I don't, I don't blame you in the slightest, man. Yeah, ba baby group was amazing. Um, and it's funny. I actually read something where Dave Bautista, who plays Drax Destroyer, for those of you that don't know, was talking about Baby Groot was a fart, a, a, a hard act to follow, is what I meant to say. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now that I've seen the movie, I'm like, yeah, I, I can see that. I can see that. It just, you know, the humor is there. It just, he's like got this childlike wonder, even more so than he did in the first film. He's mm -hmm. literally a Baby Groot. Like, doesn't understand things. He's very happy and wide-eyed. Has quite a temper. Yes. He was a mean <laughs> little bastard. I'm, I'm got to say. Just one little word. And he go from... To... Ah! <laughs> it was the best. It was. Um, so yes. Baby group was amazing. Um, the second pro for me was the action. The action sequences in this film were amazing. They were fluent. They mm. just kept going and going and getting yeah. even more amazing especially in the final act yeah like and, and that touches back to my original point of the pros like a lot of it contained humor especially that final act yes, yes. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> um that's for the spoiler review um and, and it, it's obscure enough where you wouldn't catch it if you haven't seen the movie yet but for me yes the action was incredible the, the it was visually stunning just in general. I mean, with these Guardians movies, they are already that. But yes. this took it to a whole other level. You got amazing visuals, like to the point where I feel Rockin' and Groot went from being like, wow, these look amazing in Guardians 1, to you see them in 2, it's like, 
Oh my god, they're like lifelike. This doesn't even yeah. look like CGI. Yeah, you know, with that, um, I did actually hear they said they set the standard for CGI as far as it goes right now. Um, I they, believe that. They separated that barrier. And also visually, as you were saying, um, visually is stunning. But what I've noticed is with the... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? With the Marvel universe, the intergalactic universes mm -hmm. and everything, I noticed the, the same color patterns. Mm. You know, um, Doctor Strange had it. Yeah, um, like the neons. Yeah. Neon colors. Yeah, so they're getting into those psychedelic type colors that I'm really, I'm really enjoying. I'm yeah, liking I'm that they're kind of, they're kind of blending that together. So you're like, oh, this is a, this is in the universe world. Exactly. You know, as far as being in the the earth realm of things where things are kind of muted they they kind of add a little color when you see um we see um scarlett johansson's character she's she has like some blue piping going on her suit now yeah, and things like that currents, yeah you know so so they're starting to add that but it's not there yet you know so i think yeah I think within the next few movies, they're going to evolve that to where everything becomes that more vibrant world. Of course, especially with Infinity War. Yeah. I, I mean, that's where, like, literally worlds will collide. So that's a very good point, man. I, I, I do notice that, too. I mean, just, it, it is. The visuals with those bright neon colors, like, creating, like, uh, almost like those nebulous, and I'm not talking about the character nebula, but, like, you know, like those nebulous cloud-type mm -hmm. colors. It, it just, it adds a vibrancy that makes you believe Oh, this is space. Yeah. Oh, we're we're in another part of the galaxy. Yeah, this this isn't even you know near Earth. So, just the visuals and the action were spectacular. It took it to a whole new level, in my personal opinion. I agree. Like, it was believable. It didn't look like CGI garbage, like a Transformers movie. Mm -hmm. It just it it flowed like it was just it was a nice steady flow. Even when like the action got like really rocky mm -hmm. it, it just it was it was clear fluid you didn't feel dizzy at all so kudos to them for and, making that work and i think that that has to do with a lot with um with james gunn actually shooting a lot of it in imax yeah i believe that you know he had to pay that extra attention because he knew it was going to be viewed on the bigger screen so things had to be bigger better as far as that is concerned, because you're going to have a more discerning audience who's going Absolutely. to spend that extra bit of money to see right. it on that huge, gigantic screen. I don't know if you guys have been to an IMAX theater, like a true IMAX theater. These are the biggest freaking screens I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. The one I have seen was, I told you, in Florida yeah. when I went to go see. I want to say it was the first or second Captain America. I can't remember which year it was. I think, but, I think it was when we talked about it was the first Avenger. It may have been. And it was like the theater was literally three stories high. Like that actual one with that uh, with that screen. It was so freaking huge. And I saw everything in it. And it was amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's amazing. I, I agree with you. Uh, and, you know, it tends to be more or less of a money grab. But when it comes to the Marvel movies... It is totally worth it to see an IMAX, or if you can get it, IMAX 3D. Yeah. Like with this one. Oh yeah, oh my 3D God. was natural. It oh was immersive as hell. It was, and again, like uh, with me talking about how it's just very fluid and it didn't make you dizzy or anything like that. I saw it. In, we saw it in IMAX 3D, so yeah. it was like a whole other dimension added to it, and it was just beautiful, man. Yeah, it was so good. So, yes, the action for me was another huge pro. Yeah. It just it upped the ante from the first one, and I loved it. I, I agree. All right. So, I mean, now, all right, um, I went with action two as the next one, so I'm going to skip down. Um, I don't want to do my next, next one after action, so I'm going to do um, the one after that, which is Easter eggs, and we're going to roll back around to the one after because it's, it's, it's just like kind of spoilery, so I don't want to get too much into it. But That's fair. Um, Easter eggs. I don't want to talk too much about the Easter eggs, but I liked the Easter eggs. Me too. Um, the Easter eggs in it, a lot of them I actually got as not being a a an encyclopedia like this gentleman is. This guy, he picks up on the minute things and he'll he'll nudge me and say, "Hey, hey, <laughs> see that guy there? 
that guy, and he'll give me the whole history of the guy in like the five seconds that he was just on the screen. I was like, I, I didn't even see it. <laughs> and the and the cool thing is, I'm not that annoying guy that's next to you. It's like, hey, let me interrupt the movie for you. It's like, dude, do you know who that is? Yeah. And it's like, you, you know, like kind of like when you're watching a movie and the director is like talking along with you. I'm not a director. I'm just giving you an example. But it's like, you know, the the behind the scenes type stuff that maybe you didn't catch. It's like kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, and um, but there was actually one I caught before you caught it. It was the one when they were going through, and it was these guys with these big heads. Oh, I, oh, I, I, I did. I was, I was like, just, oh. in, I was just, in, I was just in awe. <laughs> That's why I didn't move. I'm like, <gasps> and then he starts rushing me. I'm like, I know, I can't move. <laughs> yeah. But, but the Easter eggs, they, they were great. Some were a little bit more obvious than mm-hmm. others, but there, there were some really great Easter eggs in it. I really enjoyed them. We will talk a little bit more about it in the spoilers review. So Definitely. stay tuned to that. Absolutely. And the, the last thing I'll say to your point on that is it was like a good mixed bag. There was stuff where, you know, the true comic fan would only be able to pick up on it. Mm-hmm. Like I know for a fact at a certain point mm-hmm. when they gave off an Easter egg, everyone was like, what? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the same thing what happened with Thanos at the end of the Avengers. Yeah. It, it was like a house divided. Like this big purple dude turns around and smiles. You got half the audience going, oh, Thanos. <laughs> and then the other half going like, who's Barney? What's right. Barney doing here? <laughs> So um, it, it was a good mixed bag of having like you know general audience nods and then like also for the super comic book fans like Joey D so graciously called myself <laughs> um, that just lose their minds like what he was referring to when he nudged me I knew exactly what was happening but I just was stunned because I never thought that they would go that far you know what I mean like that was like a whole but, other level I didn't expect and we'll talk about that more in the spoiler edition review but I just wanted to add. I liked how it appealed to both audiences. That was very well played. Yeah, very well played, definitely. Um, your next stuff. Yeah, of course. Um, so I kind of touched on it already, so uh, my apologies here. But one of the pros for me is it was a non-sequel type of film. And what I mean by that, and I kind of mentioned it already, is that it doesn't suffer from sequelitis. It breaks the mold from the first one. It doesn't repeat events. It builds upon them. And I feel like that's what this movie did an awesome job doing. It took these characters that we have literally seen come together and it grows them. Now, one of them kind of goes in the opposite direction before he ultimately grows. But it was all a part of creating, you know, and expanding the world that we are already in. And it did a great job not retreading the steps of the first film. Which, which is something I personally, I agree with wholeheartedly. I love the fact that they did that because it's it's one of those, you get too many movies that mm-hmm. do that. Yeah. And when they do that, you're like, oh, here we go. Right. Like, um, I can name several, several sequels. Let's that... hear it. <laughs> Don't you want to hear them? Let's hear them. No, not right now. Oh, come on. Like, okay, two. Just two. I don't know. It's, you know, to fall in the line of like the sequels, so just name like two. Oh man, now I gotta ask you. You put me on the spot, man. Now, now I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Coach. I failed. It's all right. It'll come to him. We'll let him go on this one, guys. I'll hit you off camera later. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't supposed to do that. I'm kidding, of course. I love this guy. I'm just messing, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But, but fair enough, dude. I agree. So, your next pro, sir. But, um, yeah, so my next pro is the first 15 minutes. So, what I'm saying is, so, Sean was telling me that James Gunn basically said that all the, all the videos we saw, all the trailers and everything like that, basically was just the first 15 minutes of the movie. And for 90% of it, he was right. Everything we saw in all those trailers, first 15 minutes, and it was spectacular. Absolutely. Absolutely spectacular. What I want to say is the opening sequence yes. to this movie was so amazing. It it actually took me back to the first movie. <laughs> <laughs> it took me back to the first movie when um when they did when they did Star Lord's opening sequence. And it it worked. Yeah. It truly worked and I'm glad they did it. I hope for every Guardians movie they do, or them being a starring role in a movie, 
they do that opening sequence. I they do so something too. somewhat similar to that. Oh yeah. It would be amazing. Definitely, definitely. No, that's a good point, dude. I, I did I did love it because, you know, I'm not gonna give every anything away, but it, it just it took everything it's like we know you love Guardians. This is like a love letter to these characters that you fell in love with in the first one. Like that I feel like that fifteen yeah. minutes was like their moment to shine. It's like here you go. Like here here's yes. like the ultimate opening to these heroes it, it just it was perfect what marvel movies especially marvel movies that tend to have what i would say either the guardians are something dealing with tony stark mm. and you know it, it it's just that, that kind of that kind of feel to it like yeah. it, it sets up the whole movie it does it 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 gives you that this is going to be a fun ride. Yep. I know from the jump, it's going to be a fun ride. Absolutely. And I, I was so happy they did it. I'm glad, and I, like I said, I keep hoping they do it because it is great. Yeah, it should be interesting to see where they take it with three, especially with the options that are available now. That's true. There so, are options. Yeah, there are options. And if you've seen the movie, you know what we're talking about, but we'll expand upon that further in the spoiler edition review of this film. All right, so my next pro is the character growth. And again, I kind of touched on it already. There was some serious character growth uh, for every single Guardian in this movie. Um, some more than others, but I feel like they all had a good mix where it was balanced. It didn't feel like, you know, one was favored more than the other, even though a good portion of the story, of course, would revolve around the character growth of one of the Guardians in particular. Which, which is something I don't think is a spoiler. It's No, no. It, um, with, hold on, how can I put this? Without giving a spoiler, I, I think, of course, we know the main character is going to be Star-Lord. Right. So, uh, most things are going to revolve around Star-Lord, but then there are other characters who growth comes about from, you know, mirroring out from there. And there's some in particular who... Who gets a little bit more of a growth with that, which I think is good. But truthfully, all the characters in it evolve. Yes. And I feel like, and you know, I'm going to kind of paraphrase, and it's not giving away. It, it's perfect. You know, the story is about family. And, you know, at the end of the day, you could spend your whole life looking for something and then come to find out that it was standing next to you the whole time. Yeah. So, you know, it, it just... The, the family aspect of it, you know, them coming together, like this crazy ragtag group, and not only becoming more of a family, but kind of becoming aware that they are a family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they just become all the stronger for it. It just, through and through, I love the character development. And it just, it didn't feel rushed. No. Especially with a certain relationship. That you would expect most movies to be like, all right, you know, all right, you know, mm -hmm. they've had enough going back and forth. Yeah. And, and you know, they become a couple. Um, so I really do like that they're taking their time and everything just feels natural. So it, it was it was a very well done by James Gunn. You can tell he is taking nothing but love and time with these characters and it's shown through in this movie. So yeah. that for me, the character development was spectacular. I, I agree. I 100% agree. I I really like the fact that outside of the first movie, it's one of those movies they didn't, you can put that over there if you want, that they they were able to take their time with because they weren't really expecting it to be one way or another because it was just going, I, I truly just think they were just throwing the movie out there seeing if, in particular, if the crap could, could stick to the wall, basically. That's fair. That's more um, fair. And that's what they did with the first movie. So he was able to do what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it got such rave reviews. He knew what he wanted to do mm -hmm. with the next one. And, you know, we all know he wrote it. He, yeah. he worked on his baby. He yeah. developed his baby. Absolutely. And you can truly, truly tell that. You can tell, um, you can tell that he did this and... Kevin Feige came in and said, all right, we need these little things to happen within this, and he has to progress them naturally. And he did it beautifully. Yes, he did. And, he really did. And that's one of the things I've actually heard about Kevin Feige 
and the reverse sense is he would say these things need to happen. And he'd get these directors and the directors would just kind of fold and try to make that what it's about, you know, and that, that works on some levels, but, um, but on other levels it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So you get kind of a rushed feeling when it comes to some plot points. Yeah, of course. So with that, that's kind of how I feel on that. (laughs) Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3. Mm-hmm. Avengers Age of Ultron. I still don't think that's Joss Whedon's fault. I just feel like he got burned mm-hmm. out. That's a whole other discussion, though, but I agree 100% with what you're mm-hmm. saying. Yeah, I, I even feel like that with, like, with even some of the Avengers stuff. Um, I'm not saying, oh, the Avengers movies suck. Don't get me wrong. But, yeah, Age of Ultron, like you said, it was, um, it's that cap- um, Civil War. It they they tried to throw some things in there that kind of almost seemed like, uh, you know, it was a, it was a, I don't want to say a hard stop, but it was a bump. Like, mm-hmm. you noticed it, like, oh, okay. All right, they got to throw that in there because they got to expand this world. Right. Of yeah. course. But no, very good point, man. I, I, I do like their product placement because they're Galaxy users and I'm a Galaxy man. That's actually what this is being filmed on right now. Brought to you by the Galaxy. We are not... <laughs> and we're not promoted by Samsung by any means. If if you if you want to sign this guy up though, this is like one of your greatest you, disciples. You can send me all of them. <laughs> I will take them all. There you go. <laughs> it's out there. Balls in your court, Samsung. All right, mm-hmm. back to our pros and cons list. You're in charge, sir. All right. So um, basically, I just have one more in my pros list, right. um, which are the end credits without giving it away anything um just to say there are multiple end credits Mm -hmm. so stay until the lights come on that that's all i gotta say on that Mm -hmm. um we'll talk about it in a couple months uh, minutes yeah absolutely and you have to know this at this point guys with any marvel movie let me rephrase any marvel studios film mcu marvel cinematic universe Mm -hmm. you stay until that film ends and that means the credits are done that screen is black and the The ushers are coming in to clean stuff up trust me you want to always stay to the end there's always something at the end don't let anyone be like oh there's nothing at the end these credits are too long i'm gonna leave you will regret it you will regret it. this guy and i laugh at people all the time where they see like you know what they think is the ending it's like oh time to go i'm like you dummy you have no idea (laughs) You came with your girlfriend, didn't you? <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. Poor girlfriend man. got mad. Did, I don't want to sit through the credits. Mm, poor guy. Poor guy. Poor girl sometimes. I've seen... Yeah. yeah. There are there are some pretty awesome females out there that yes. are in the same hemisphere of loving this world as we do. And it's in the reverse. So, to girls, we also feel for you. Yes. Yes. And I'll give you my number later and you can give me a call and we can all hang out. Through the end credits together. I'm just kidding. Lady Joshua, don't don't bite me. <laughs> but the bearded con man, on the other hand. Oh, this man. The beard. The beard speaks. See, I'm going yeah. right out. I'm a positive influence <laughs> on this gentleman right here. So, all right. Awesome. No, I agree with you 100%. The way the end credits were handled, it was perfect. Because mm-hmm. um, without giving anything away, like you said, there are multiple end sequences after the credits start rolling. So it's a good way to keep you entertained until you reach the end and you see the true ending or the final scene. Yes. So it, it was it was very well done by James Gunn. Yes. And I loved how it was always constantly entertaining. And you're like, oh, we're getting another one. Okay, that was amazing. And then the credits start going again. And it's like, and here's another one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so it was, it was really cool. Very well done by him. I agree yes. 100%. So gave you the good. Now it's time for the bad. Oh, it is so bad. Oh my God. I'm, I'm even afraid. I'm, I'm shaking. Put your hand shaking. All right. Um, actually, we're gonna let you. We're gonna let you go first on yours. All right. That's how we do things around here, ladies and gentlemen. We eat our dessert first, and then the vegetables. So oh yeah. I actually like vegetables, though. Believe it or not. So I that's do, that, that do. doesn't apply to me. I or grew you. up liking vegetables. I, I love broccoli and spinach and kale and basically all of them except carrots. I don't like carrots up. That's why I wear glasses. <laughs> the more you know, ladies.
ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. All right, so my cons <laughs> list. First one being, and this is going to be hard, um, because what I have to say technically is spoiler territory. Well, then let's skip that one. I will say it this way. The villain's plan. And you'll know what I'm talking about when we get into the spoiler edition of this review. So keep that in mind and stay tuned for the spoiler review version of this video. So over to you, sir. All right. Well, my cons list is not as detailed as his because I'm not the encyclopedia as this gentleman is. Um, but mine went into what I like to call the Spider-Man 3 edition because I was going to say 2 and 3, but I was corrected. I'm sorry. Can, can you... I don't understand the combination of words there. Th there was this Spider-Man movie that does not exist in the world. There you go. Um, that was really horrible. I actually had to go see it. Actually, the same day that this came out many, many moons ago, I was in Vegas. I was in Vegas to see this film, okay? Not only to see this film, but I was there, and it was my birthday and all that. And I was so peed off. I booed. I booed. I got a t-shirt from that movie, and you know what? I can't remember, but I believe I burnt it in protest, in the streets, in the middle of my block. And there was a gas leak, by the way, in the middle of my block, which I found out a few years later. And I could have set the whole um, block ablaze, but I didn't care because it had to go. It had to go. <laughs> Are you John Rambo? You're just blowing up a town because you're mad? God. Hey. hey. <laughs> Things have to go. It has to happen. But um, Oh, man. Spider-Man 3. I know the film, guys. I know the film. I just... I pretend like I don't. It's like Baltimore. Can't say his name. No, um... But my issue with it... I felt like there was too many villains. And we'll get into it a little bit. Um, I'm just going to say... I felt like too many villains weren't resolved enough. And I'll get into it when I talk about when we were in the spoiler review because I, I kind of got a comparison that I want to talk about it with. Sure, sure, sure. We'll get into that. Okay. Right. You got a couple there. Sure. Okay, so this is kind of nitpicky. This is really my only other con. Um, and without giving too much away, Awesome Mix Volume 2 not being as prominent in the film, and also it was kind of convoluted. And I don't want to give too much away, but it felt like the soundtrack, even though there were key points in the film, and it's in spoiler territory for one in particular, uh, where it's a major, major plot point, this song actually. Um, but I felt like the music wasn't as at the forefront as the first one was. Yeah. And it was kind of convoluted as to where it was actually coming from. It mm -hmm. seemed like it all of a sudden existed outside of Peter's tapes from his mom. And for me, that kind of left me scratching my head and made me think, well, maybe, um, you know, there's other music off of Awesome Mix Volume 1 that we haven't heard yet. And maybe that's why. Because Sorry, guys. We technically, <laughs> oh, it's all good. Um, <laughs> because technically, the last two songs that are on the Awesome Mix Volume 1 or that appeared in Volume 1, the original Guardians of the Galaxy, were technically... Awesome Mix Volume 2 songs from the second tape that Peter's mom gave to him. So maybe that's what it is. Could be. But it, it's kind of nitpicky. It just it made me scratch my head a little bit, and I didn't understand it. Um, the music the music was great. I just I felt like it was kind of like, what is this? Oh, okay, I'm kind of on board now. Like, you know, like with, with the first one, it was kind of, you know, it was well-known music, but you recognize they, after you start hearing it. They like, were... Like, they were number ones, basically. Like, classics. You know, um... Like, which, Come and Get Your Love. Like, the minute that started playing at the beginning of this film, like, oh, I'm gonna love this movie. Because I love that. I love that song. And I, I agree with that. It's one of those, I saw it, or I heard it, per se, and it was a... The first movie, you, you were like, oh, man, she... His mom, because his mom, like, basically top 40s music. Yeah. And so... She was very much like the... AM pop music mom. For yeah. Sure. So she would listen to it, make a mix for him, and give it to him. So I did kind of feel like maybe it was when she was starting to starting to develop her issues or whatnot. Maybe she went to to more of a a, a, a different path. I would yeah. say. I would. Yeah. 
and not not saying it's depressing or anything, but mm-hmm. just it's not. It doesn't feel as to me as fun as the first one did. I agree with you. You know, um, there's a little bit more emotion to it. Yeah, I was gonna say you didn't you didn't have that that dance. I'm gonna dance around feel because a lot of people in the first movie literally did. They were yeah. dancing in their seats, especially some of the um, some of the people who weren't as familiar with the Marvel world. They were probably going there with their boyfriends or girlfriends. Yep. And they're like, oh, man, the music's great and blah, 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 because that's what you heard a lot about. Yeah. This one, I don't think you're going to hear that much about Volume 2. I agree. And, again, like like what he said, it's a little bit more out there. It's still great songs, but it, it's not as fun or as recognizable. Yeah. Um, so that, that, to me, that was kind of like, oh, okay. But, you know, the one thing that James Gunn has gone on record saying is all this music, it's the music that he grew up with and loved. So it makes mm-hmm. sense. You know, he's picking from his playlist of, like, his multiple awesome mixes that he probably has. Mm-hmm. So, um, I have no problem with the music itself. I just, I felt like that was, like, a piece that was missing for me and kind of left me scratching my head at a couple of points. Like, how is this music playing right now? Because Peter's Awesome Mix Volume 2 cassette is nowhere to be found. Mm-hmm. So, it, it just... Maybe a little minor continuity error, or like I said, maybe they were actual Awesome Mix Volume 1 songs that we never heard. I don't know, but that, that was that's the only thing, and that's coming from a super fan who is nitpicking. Because I love this film. Don't get me wrong, I love this film. So that, that those are my only two cons. So, um, like we said before, we're going to give an overall, right, real quick. I'm personally, I feel as though the movie was great. I'm going to give it double deuces. Because I liked it. Um, double deuces. Yeah, double I deuces. like that. <laughs> That's a great rating system. So my fans, you know that I do. I'm like, if I gotta throw stars, like I usually either say like you know one out of like one to five stars or you know one to ten stars. Double deuces. It's beautiful. <laughs> like like is that like an equivalent of like a two thumbs up type deal? Yeah, or, yeah. I like it. Respect. Yeah, double deuces. Yeah. Double deuces, guys. I like it. <laughs> Perfect way to sum it up. Double deuces. Yeah. <laughs> Genius. That's how I roll the idea, man, right here. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I, I think the movie was excellent. Excellent in every way that it could be. The minor cons that I or the minor con that I did have for it was I was really nitpicking because overall it didn't really affect it too much. It just kind of annoyed me. Personally, I, I didn't hear anybody else complaining about it because I have started watching a few reviews and nobody else complained about it. So it's just me being kind of annoyed with it. <laughs> it's understandable. You know, it's your personal preference. Yeah. Uh, understandable. But you brought up um, good points and we're going to talk about it more in the spoiler edition of this review. Um, so stay tuned for that. But the points that you made are valid. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I don't think it's more or less you being nitpicky as you're making a, a good point that no one's made yet. Mm-hmm. So so what is your overall? Overall, okay, for me, it is a solid 8.59 out of 10 stars for me. Um, like I said, I feel like volume one is still the superior, but two is like right there, man. Like right there. It just, it was such a fun thrill ride throughout. I loved it start to finish. It had emotions. It had me, you and I both, laughing out loud constantly throughout. Constantly. It, it just... It was great, and I loved it. I pooped myself a little bit. <laughs> so that's what that smell was. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but no, guys, I, I really did enjoy this film. Um, my recommendation to you, if you haven't seen it yet, please do yourself a favor and go see it. If you can, go see it in IMAX 3D like uh, this gentleman and I did. If not, 3D or, you know, just in general, just go see that film. Do it. Yeah. Do yourself a favor. Spend it's... the money. Throw money at James Gunn. Just throw it. On baby hand. Uh, that's on top, on top of what? The $8 million that he made opening night? Exactly. And domestically, guys. That's just domestic. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, overall, I loved it. I thought it was great. Go see it. That's my final thoughts on it on the non-spoiler side. All right, guys. Well, thank you again so much for watching. Subscribe today. Go check out Joey D on all of his stuff. Tell him that the Bearded Comment sent you. I would greatly appreciate it. And guys, thank you again. Remember, Beard. Be exceptional and rad dudes. I am the Bearded Comment.
I'm Joey D. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And we will see you next time.